So if we look at this thing again, briefly, and we look at the height of the camera in some of these shots, this is what I would call the kind of the security camera angle. We're not really in the, the height of this character here. And it, it might be the right camera angle depending on what the story point is. So I'm not saying that this isn't good, but I feel like this kind of shot puts us more in his world. And what I end up doing for something like that, if I still don't understand this thing here, this is our horizon line, here's our vanishing point. So I'll just put out our little bloom here. And if I'm not really sure how to use this thing, I might not even have it on, I'll turn it off. But I will do something like this. And if we wanna do really, really big blocky blocking that helps us not worry about the actual shape of the characters, but where they are. So if I wanna do something like that beaver sitting at the table, I might just block in something like this, really big and blocky. Just, and this is what people do in viz dev all the time, right? When their designers just work with shapes. And then if I wanna put the lumberjack and I wanna keep his head in this area, I might just do this first, and this is the table. And I know this looks very abstract, but the whole point is, what I'm trying to do is create this feeling right here, which is the height of the camera. Let me scroll up to this drawing right here to, to make sure that we're representing these characters at a low angle with this camera right here. So if I do this kind of blocking, this is gonna help me understand already where my characters need to be. And if I turn that down a little bit, or a lot of bit, then what I can do is start just roughing in a shape. If I can't even understand the, the actual physical shape of the character, I just will do something like this. Okay, here's a big, I know he's got a tail like this because he's a beaver. And you know, I know, I know he's got a fedora here. And then I know there's a chair behind him. And I can play around with him, by the way, with his general height. On maybe on a separate layer, I'll put that chair here. And I might even fill it in just so we don't get confused with what we're looking at, okay? But I have, so I have this stuff set up. And then my lumberjack guy, I'll put on a separate layer. And I know he's roughly this big, big rounded shoulders. And I'm gonna say he's looking at our, um, at our beaver. Eye line a little bit more like that. So here's my guy right here. So already, let's just go back another panel. So we've started off with this as a rough sketching, and I'm really not even putting anatomy in here just because I want to make sure the camera is at the height of these characters. So if we were to do a little window here again. I do a side view of my table and my beavers here, for example, sitting in a chair. And my big lumberjack is right here. And I want my camera roughly here. Well, this, this drawing right here is already helping me not do this which is, that's, that's what I want right there. But what this is helping me do is avoid something like this where I think a lot of times, because we don't quite understand how to create foreshortening, we might end up doing something where the desk will look like this. This is a very, very extreme version of everybody, but we're looking really on top of the desk. And then we stage it, we end up staging something like this where we have that guy here and the beaver down here. And so what I end up doing as my little cheat or a hack is if I'm not 100% sure, and I say I have my configuration right here, which is turning into this thing, let's go to this drawing right here. What I will do is I will make sure I got my, my here's my lumberjack guy right here. I know my table's gotta be, my desk has gotta be in this area. And so what I'll do, I'm gonna put the desk in a different color just so we can make it a little clearer. But I'll put these two lines and I'll just put, I'm gonna hold down the shift key to make a very straight line, okay? I'm gonna put that above here. And then I'm gonna hold the shift key down one more time to make another straight line. And if I wanna make create more foreshortening, all I gotta do is take this one line below and raise it up higher. And by the closer I bring these two lines together, 
the more foreshortening I've created. And let me just show you what that looks like if I get rid of this, if I bring this line back down. Well, I'm gonna do it first the, the right way. The other, and this is, there's no dynamic staging. I'm gonna go straight on. And if I wanna create the side of the desk right here, and here's the corner right here, and that's the other corner, and this is the area where your legs kinda go in. And I'll pull that over here. And here's the corner of the desk. This foreshortening, because I've put this area closer, it makes it feel like the camera is lower because we're barely looking on top of the desk. You remember we talked about the horizon line. I'll put the horizon line right up here and I'm actually gonna make the horizon line a different color so we can really see it clearly. Let me go to this color here. Here's our horizon line. Is if I put the horizon line roughly about here and I feel like that's where it needs to be, anything beneath this horizon line, which is right here, anything beneath it, we will be looking down on top of, which means we're seeing on top of the desk, but we're not seeing that much of it because we're barely above the horizon line. And this is the test you guys can all do with getting your camera phone out and taking it and getting it right on the floor and putting your camera right in the floor and seeing how much of the floor, if you look straight out from the floor to a wall, how much room you have between the where your camera is and the wall. There's not a lot of a lot of height between that. And so that's a good way of measuring that. But um, by doing this little hack where you bring these two lines together, it creates that foreshortening. If I were to do this instead, say so I just made my line here and I would do that. Typically, now this line, this actually already looks to me like I'm creating a different, two different perspectives. And it feels actually because I see more desk between here and here, it feels like we're looking down on top of it. But the problem is we've got two different perspectives. We got the perspective of this guy here and the perspective of this guy here, which are on a similar plane, but on the desk, we're looking really down on top of that. So it's not really helping me. So all I, my, my basic you know, hack is just, well, I'll do this and I'll keep the lines, these two lines very close to each other. In this case, I'm making it even more foreshortened. And now I have a desk like this, and now it feels like we're really, really, really with our guy. And I'm gonna turn off the, the top guides here for a moment. You can see a desk drawer right here. I'll put that back on. And maybe the edge of the desk over here. But if I did this, already it feels like we are, we're low enough and we're not creating that, those two different perspectives. And I find that to be a, a fun way of, or simple way of helping myself identify that. So first, block it out as you think it needs to be by starting here. Just do big, bold shapes, then turn down the opacity like we did here, and then block in your characters. And that will help bring the camera lower to the point of experience of our characters. That's the real goal. And then we can do the same thing for pretty much any kind of location, I think. So if we wanted to just say, uh, I wanna broaden it out to the, to the room, the actual office, okay? So we're gonna do a down shot just so you guys have an idea. Here's our down shot. I'm gonna do a little bit of perspective just with these walls. So here's our floor, here's the desk, here's one character, here's another character. And then, if, but if I wanna do a shot where after I have a basic understanding of this, if I want to do a shot of a guy standing at a doorway, for example, this is what I can happen at times. And I'm just going to, I want to bring this up to you guys. That sometimes I've seen this before where someone will just draw a doorway here and then they start putting the floor like this. And then you got this really weird high angle. And I, I am particularly, it just bugs me a lot because um, it really depends. It's going to really depend on your director, but I would say in general, this kind of staging is, are things we typically don't do. We have a guy here, let's say he's just grabbing this very wide door right here, and he's waving. And then we have to draw our little guy, our beaver guy down here, waving also, right? But this is another example of that security camera angle that I see a lot. And we have, what is the big indicator of that? How can we really understand what that is? It's really the distance of here, that line, to wherever our floor is. It's a huge area that we're covering. And what we can do is just compress this area here 
to bring the basically to bring the camera lower. And this is a great way to for everybody who's still learning perspective. I really believe I don't have my camera phone in here, but pretend here's my camera phone, it's a hard drive. But if I were to do it in this room right now, and if I ideally if I had a table, I would like take a picture of my table here, this height, and I bring it to this height and open up in Photoshop and you can see the distance. If you bring that drawing in, that, that photo, bring it in Photoshop and measure the, the width of the desk, it's gonna compress. And that will help you guys see that perspective shift. And I think you guys, I think using tools like your camera are a great way to learn. So if I wanna take this whole room again and not make that security camera thing going on again, even if I'm not drawing with my horizon line. Again, do the big blocky thing. If I want my guy at the door, or you know, I want him to be somewhere in this area here, I can just draw a big, big blocky shape like this. Like he's somewhere over here with his legs, grabbing the doorway, and the beaver. I want the beaver to be somewhere over here. So now that I have him roughly in this same area, maybe I can play off of that and see what that gets me. I'll turn it down. That'll help me now see the doorway, so I'll kind of block in my doorway like this. Maybe I want to make it feel a little bit more angled, and I'll do this. We talked about this last week, guiding our eye of our audience to look where we want them to look. We did the eye trace video. But rather than me doing these floor lines like this that are going directly straight, if I have a character over here, and if I want to move the door over a little bit more like that, what I will do is I will start doing my lines this way as my vanishing points over here. And by doing this, these lines are actually guiding the eye of our audience to look at my character. This can be the ceiling right here. There's a wall, slightly angled. And then I can basically put our guy in there now. I'll turn that down a little bit. So now I'm just roughing out the basic shapes. He's, he's on the way out. He's walking out of here, out of the office. But now I've, brought, I've got, see the difference between here and here? Now I'm bringing the camera a little bit lower to our guy. And I can put the beaver in the foreground up here if I want. If I want to even accentuate it. But I'm going to keep the same height, actually, of where we were. So he's kind of got these round cheeks here. So now... I've got our guy and I've got our shot that feels a little bit more grounded because we are down in their point of, of reference, you know, in his world. And then if I want to bring the camera in a little bit more over his shoulder, this is a good example of me now problem solving. If I wanted to have, here's my camera here, and I want to bring it down over this guy's shoulder somewhere in here, but now I can figure out where I can be more dynamic even more so after I've done this, this shot here. But what I'm trying to show you guys from the perspective trick is seeing the floor now being compressed. The amount of floor that we have here, this floor space, compared to that with that is pretty significant, right? In fact, even if we can't quite measure with our human eye for having, if we're just struggling for whatever reason, I'm gonna put on a separate layer, I'm gonna do this. And I'm gonna drag that up to our new drawing. And I'm gonna hold it over our floor. And you can see how much more floor we had from the previous drawing versus the last drawing. And that compression brings the camera down lower and it puts the audience in the perspective and the world of our characters. That's really what I want you guys to do. So there's really no need in general to do these types of high angle shots unless there's a specific need in the storytelling. But in general, it just can, it pulls us out of the storytelling a little bit. It makes it feel less personal and less subjective. Even if you have a character outside, this is the last one I'm gonna do, like you have a character running around on the streets, it's just the same idea. You wanna, again, bring the camera lower down to our point of experience. If I wanna do something like this to give myself a, a vanishing point here, now I got a guy way out here running. I'm even though, even though we have this much ground plane, it still feels like we're in that perspective point of the character. And if the character ran all the way up here, they would be 
at the height of the camera. And that's the big thing I want you guys to think about as you're boarding, as opposed to doing this, where we ended up creating just a, a random line this high like that. Now it feels like we're in that drone flight pattern and we're looking over people's shoulders. And this is not bad. It just, it feels like we're not in anybody's perspective. We're not really with anybody. It could be maybe if we had a, you know, balcony here in the foreground and somebody standing like here, then that kind of helps anchor the idea into something. So that's just, again, it's just compressing these lines and bringing them down further so that we have basically less, basically the idea is less ground and maybe a little bit more sky. 